over 65 years, Evercoat has been providing professional repair shops with innovative materials and best trade practices for making fiberglass repairs. Some may not be aware, but at one time, fiberglass was even in Evercoat's name. When it comes to body repair where finish really matters, it all starts with the right prep and selecting the right materials and repair method. Today, Tim McKinney, Senior Application Engineer at Evercoat, is going to discuss and demonstrate fiber tech for completing fiberglass panel repair that will provide you with consistent, flawless finish results every time. Tim, I know you've spent decades completing fiberglass repair and coaching shops on the right way to do them. What would you say are the biggest keys to success? Well, actually I have to say proper preparation, uh, using the proper grits, and using the right product to fill in and then finish off the repair. Um, I'd like to share a little bit more with the audience about that. So the biggest thing to start out with is proper substrate identification. Knowing is it SMC. SMC is smooth on both sides, but it's got these fibers sticking out of it. Or if it's traditional fiberglass. As we can see, we've got some fiber sticking out of here, but the back looks a little bit different. So we're going to have to take different repair product decisions for the repair of these two substrates. Everything that works on SMC will most likely work on fiberglass, but not everything that works on fiberglass will work on SMC. So you have to make sure you identify the substrate. Uh, second is going to be the cleaning process. Before you start any repair, we always recommend to clean the substrate, clean it with soap and water to remove the biologicals, uh, then follow that off with a wax and grease remover. But what's different about these is with the fiber sticking out, we don't want to have anything that's actually going to get down into those fibers. So if you're going to get, you're going to be cleaning the area, don't get too close with the wax and grease remover. And in the areas where the fibers are going to be, you actually want to clean in those particular areas with something that's going to flash off a little bit quicker, something like an acetone or an alcohol. Because if wax and grease remover get into those fibers, what happens is they wick down into the repair and they run the risk of coming back out after the repair is done and then causing some issues for, uh, for dieback or for uh, uh, adhesion issues or for some, some other issues. So we want to make sure we're not putting any kind of slower solvents into those fibers themselves. Um, the next thing I would have to talk about, gosh, would have to be proper preparation for the proper uh, repair. So as you can see here, I've got you know, what this, this repair actually started out as being a crack like this. So this is what we hear a lot of folks say that they do for the repair. They do the infamous, I call it V-notch. So they just V everything open and put the repair material in. And actually, I've got a little footage, if you show the audience here, where I've taken a measurement of the panel to determine what the thickness is. You wanna actually have a ratio of about one to 10, up to in some cases, one to 15. Uh, some fiberglass uh, components, maybe for like a boat, would actually call out a ratio of 1 to 12, 1 to 15. So if you do though that, for every one millimeter of thickness, you want to have it go out 10 millimeters or 12 millimeters in order to have a proper feather edge. So for this one, I've got about a 50 millimeter or five centimeter bevel edge around this. It's got a nice smooth taper. So I've increased that surface area. So if you look at the amount of surface area you have between these two repairs, where the V-notch, there's not a lot of material that's gonna be able to fit down in there and have a good bite. Whereas over here, we're gonna be able to have a nice smooth transition for the repair material. It's gonna have more surface area to bite onto. And we're really gonna reduce the likelihood of this repair mapping down the road. The next thing I would have to say would probably be to make sure it's properly catalyzed. Now, if I had done this repair with a resin and mat, I wanna make sure that the resin is properly catalyzed. Best advice I have for that would be to pour your resin into a paint mixing cup. Make sure you know the volume before you start adding in the catalyst. Uh, that's always gonna be very important. And, so, and matter of fact, uh, for one of our resins, we call out to add in so many inches of cream hardener to so many ounces. So what I'll do is I'll take a pencil and I'll mark out however many inches. So when I know what the volume of that product is, I'll put my cream hardener on here so I know how many inches go to the resin as the volume, the label says. So when I mix it up, I'm putting in the proper amount. We want to make sure that the foundation for this repair, whether it's the resin in the mat or if it's a fiber reinforced product, that it's properly catalyzed so it doesn't move. Because if it's under catalyzed and it does start to move, then everything on top of it's going to move. So that would be the, the best advice I would give for anyone doing a fiberglass repair. 
Tim, I know that shops are under a lot of efficiency pressures these days, so avoiding costly rework and unhappy customers is critical. Could you walk us through what you're describing so our audience can really see the difference? Absolutely. So as I said from before, the key point to start off is the right feather edge. So we make sure we're not going to do the V-notch, we're going to do a proper bevel by measuring the substrate, knowing how far that bevel needs to go out. Once I've got that area prepped, and the proper preparation is going to be crit critical for this part. This area that I have right here was actually ground down in order to get to that bevel, but then I came back with 80 grit. So the only grit that I have on this whole repair area right now is actually 80 grit in order to get the, um, the product over top of it. I want it to be prepared with 80 grit, so when I come back and sand it with 80 grit, I have a proper beveled uh, and a proper feather edge as well. So we'll start off with that. Mix up some of the product here. For this repair, I'm gonna use FiberTech. I like it because it's got the fibers in it. They're gonna to help to bridge over top of my repair. Very easy to work with. Before you use any of the products, we always recommend stir the product up, make sure it's a homogenous mix from start to finish. And I need some hardener. Magically it appears. All right, now I want to make sure I properly catalyze this. This is roughly about a four inch puddle, a little less this way, a little bit more this way. So I'm going to put a bead of hardener from edge to edge across here. And maybe just a tick more. It's a little cool in here this morning. Mix the product up. We want to make sure it's evenly mixed as well. With this product, it's purple, and we have a blue hardener in here. So we want to make sure we've got it consistently mixed up. And then after I have it mixed up, spread it out a little bit. This is really going to help to give you a little bit more working time. Not so critical with this time of the year being a little bit cooler, but in the summertime, this is really going to be a critical point. So first coat's going to go on. All you want to do is wet the surface. Press the resin into the repair. So if you look at it, you can actually see that there's not a whole lot of material in there. We're just wet, pressing the resin down into the repair to make sure it's well saturated for the next layer we're going to build up. And then we want to slowly build the repair up until we have what we need in here from material. I like to give myself a little bit more repair material in here. That way, once I'm done with the sanding, I know I've got it straight. I want to make sure that I do most of my build with the fiber reinforced product. So that would be the application of the repair material. After it's been sanded, the repair is going to look something like this. So then you can really start to see the difference between where it was V-notched and then possibly filled in that amount of material and surface area there versus where the proper feather edge was and how much more surface area we had for the product to bite onto. So hopefully it helps some of the questions that some of the folks might have in terms of fiberglass repairs with our products. So Tim, what I'm hearing you say is that the FiberTech product is for large repairs, but what product would be appropriate for smaller repairs? Well, that's a good question. Um, Actually, FiberTech is my go-to repair for something that's about this size. 
But the other product that I like to use is uh, Everglass. So the big difference between the two is FiberTech kind of uses a, a medium strand, so there's some short strand, long strand technology in it. Everglass uses a fiberglass uh, pulp or fiberglass milled material. So you really don't see the fibers per se in this particular product, but they are in there. Uh, so for smaller repairs, that would be a good product. Glass Light would be its counterpart to that that's lightweight, so it sands a little bit easier. Uh, FiberTech, like I said, for a pair about this size, maybe a little bit smaller as well. If I'm gonna be doing a larger repair, well, I might need to actually go to resin and matte. So we've actually got some images of our products here for the resins that you could use, and they could be used with the fiberglass mat, uh, a fiberglass cloth, or even our woven roving materials. So matching the size of the repair uh, is really gonna be critical to make sure that you're not gonna be trying to repair something uh, too small with fiberglass mat and resin, which it could be done, or something too big with something like a, a fiber reinforced product in the can like this. Uh, but FiberTech is usually my go-to for most of the collision repair applications because it works on a wide range of substrates from SMC to fiberglass, metal, aluminum. It just works on a wide range of products. Tim, thanks for that information, that was great. It sounds like identifying the substrate, identifying the right product to use, using that product in the right way, catalyzation, and all of these things are really important to avoid costly reduce. Absolutely, so like I said from before, making sure you identify what the, the substrate is, making sure you've selected the right product to go along with that, and making sure that product is properly catalyzed can end a lot of troubles in dealing with some of the FRP, SMC, and composite repairs.